I'm in the market for a new adventure bike. Since I'm doing all the research anyway, I thought I'd share it with all of you. Well, presenting information to you in a matter-of-factly way is helpful. It's not all that fun. So I've decided to do an eight-team adventure bike bracket championship. In the first video, the KTM 1290 Super Adventure R knocked off the BMW R1250. In the second video, the Triumph Tiger 1200 defeated the Kawasaki Versus. In this video, the Ducati Multistrada and Yamaha Super Tenere face off. We're just four videos away from unveiling the new bike. I've pissed off some riders with this series. I get it, riders are passionate about their bikes. So much so that I had to delete a few comments. At the end of this video, I'm going to address those and a few other popular comments viewers have made during this series. So stick around for that. Ducati just unveiled their new Multistrada V4 and will be available in January 2021. There are three models in the new V4 lineup. The base V4, the V4S, and the V4S Sport. Other than a little more than four grand price disparity, the differences between the base V4 and the V4S are significant. The V4S has semi-active Mazaki suspension controlled by the Ducati Skyhook Suspension Evolution System a larger 330 millimeter front brake disc, full LED headlight with daytime running lights and cornering lights, a larger 6.5 inch full color TFT screen, Ducati Connect to connect your smartphone, Ducati Quick Shift for clutchless shifts, cruise control, and hill hold control. The V4S Sport is further upgraded with what Ducati calls Sport Library, an Akrapovic carbon fiber and titanium exhaust, and a carbon fiber mudguard. What truly shines here is the new V4 engine. It's an 1158cc power plant with 170 horsepower and 92 foot-pounds of torque. The biggest change in the V4 engine is the move away from desmodromic valves to spring valves. This translates to a 36,000 mile valve service interval rather than the 15,000 for the desmodromic Multistrada 1260. No other bike manufacturer can come close to that interval. While many die-hard Ducati fans might grumble, this is something that long-distance adventurers like myself can really get behind. Electronics in the Ducati Multistrada just go so well together, and the V4 is no different. To save my bacon, the V4 has 8-level traction control, 8-level wheelie control, 3-level cornering ABS that can be disabled for off-road. The S model has a feature that really piques my interest, radar control. This allows the bike to have adaptive cruise control and blind spot detection. Except for the S model Multistratas, there are zero motorcycles in the market that have these features. The V4 engine has four riding modes. The Sport and Touring modes give all the beans at 170 horsepower, and Enduro and Urban mode utilize 115 horsepower. What really intrigues me most about the V4S and the V4S Sport is Ducati Skyhook Suspension Evolution System. This provides data from the internal control unit that's used to adjust suspension settings as well as auto leveling. According to Ducati, fine adjustment takes place instantly and is integrated into the riding modes or can be personalized via the onboard computer. The Multistrada V4 is a damn fine bike. For my long distance adventures, the V4 is a perfect bike. Ducati changed the riding position for the V4 to make long distance adventures much more comfortable and the large 5.8 gallon tank will carry me far away to areas where I won't see a fuel station for a long while. While I'm not opposed to all the technology, it seems to be a bit much, but I'm certain I can get used to it. But getting used to it is a lot more difficult at a cost above 20k for all three models. The rider modes are good, but do I really need 115 horsepower off-road? I'd likely never be in a riding environment where I'd utilize all that power. Very few would. The Yamaha Super Tenere is an 1199cc parallel twin with a 270 degree crank. This bike delivers a ton of torque. That's just what I'm looking for on the road and off. The weight is kept at your ankles for stability, but it's still a really heavy bike at 584 pounds. It's powerful though. 110 horsepower would make long distance adventures a dream. 84 foot pounds of torque and a 19 inch front wheel should make for a pretty good balance between the road and dirt. Like other bikes in the bracket, the T12 has rider modes. Touring mode allows you to set suspension soft for comfort, and there's also sport for greater road performance. Cruise control is also standard on the T12. And with the push of a button, the electronically adjusted suspension can be set for your riding environment. With the electronically adjusted suspension, there are four preload settings, three damping presets, and additional seven fine tuning damping adjustments. Suspension can be dialed perfectly to what you would need. Rider aids are also plentiful on the T12. 
Traction control regulates ignition timing, fuel injection, and throttle valve opening based on wheel spin, and many riders would be happy to know that turning traction control off is an option. The T12 also has ABS, and turning it off in the dirt is akin to learning how to salsa dance. You have to get off the bike, put up the center stand, and then do some type of yoga contortion while praying to the ABS gods. Some clever riders have installed aftermarket switches to get around this inconvenience. The T12 is a good bike that falls in the market somewhere between the KTM 1290 Super Adventure R and the Honda Africa Twin. The T12 is a great road tour and an okay off-road bike. There are better options if you want off-road adventures. I'll unveil the winner in a moment, but first let's move on to some comments that viewers have made during this series. The first is that some get really upset when it's perceived I'm making negative comments about a bike they own and love. The truth is no bike is perfect, especially in the adventure bike market where brands are forced to compromise to find a balance for the market segment they are selling to. Some bikes are better in the dirt, while others are better on the road. Some bikes are lighter, while others are behemoths. Some bikes have tons of power for the road and others compromise that for the dirt. Well, you get the idea. What I'm trying to do here is find a bike that fits what I'm looking for in a bike. I love hearing what others want and need out of their bikes, but what I want won't be what others might be looking for. And hey, that's a good thing. Variety is the spice of life. That's cliche, but it's very true. Another comment that appeared often in the first two episodes was that I should do a proper championship and test ride these bikes and that going on stats alone is not the best way to choose a bike. This is true, but let me address a few things. First, to my knowledge, no one on YouTube has done a video series like this, so I don't believe there's a proper way to do it. But I agree, having viewers see Motovlog style reviews of these bikes would be helpful. For the viewer, there are a few reasons I haven't. The first and most obvious is that COVID and winter have shut down all test rides in Wisconsin. There are zero dealerships near me that would let me test ride any bike. I've been riding the new bike for about a month now and I'll unveil it at the end of this series. With more ride time on that bike, I'll have way more knowledge in spring when I'll be able to get on every one of these bikes and do a proper review series. At the end of the day though, this series is just something fun for me to do and if the information helps others, that's great. All right, on to the winner. Despite the high cost, the winner is the Ducati Multistrada. That new V4 just makes the Multistrada stand out. Thanks for watching. Ride safe and keep your wheels rolling in the right direction. I'll see you in the next video.